In this lesson, we're going to introduce the concept upon which the entire rest of the course is built. This is like the foundation, and if we get it right, everything else we talk about will make so much more sense. And I'm of course talking about the art of storytelling. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and never is that more true than with food photography. Your job as a storyteller is really to build a strong and engaging human connection between your artwork and your photographs and the people who are looking at them. So I want to share with you a blueprint that I've built, a four-step process that helps me tell a compelling and engaging story every time. There's also a number of tools that you have that can help you manipulate the story. Things like the way you style your food and how the lighting is set up. So we're going to look at the six primary tools you have to manipulate your scene to tell the type of story you want to tell. And we'll conclude with a few examples of my own food where I tried to tell a story and we'll try to dissect that scene and see how I told the story and what emotions I was invoking to try to really drive this point home. Learning to tell an intentional story is really the foundation. If you start with a story, everything else falls into place. It becomes so much easier to decide how to set up the lighting or to decide what accents to add into the picture. So if you put the story first, everything else falls into place. And all photos convey information, but the ones that evoke emotions are so much more powerful. If you learn how to tell an emotionally engaging story through your photos, then you're so far ahead of the game. And the secret to doing that is you have to ask yourself before you ever pick up the camera, before you set up your scene, how do you want your audience to feel as they look at your pictures? The key, as we mentioned, behind all of this is building a strong human connection. And a story does that. A story helps connect your food with the audience who's looking at the photographs. Story is what draws people into your photographs. If they're looking at a set of pictures and one really speaks to them, it's probably because that picture has a more compelling story. It's not as if they're consciously dissecting the story and describing every element of it. It's a subconscious and a visceral thing that happens naturally when a story is present in a picture. So it doesn't matter so much what the story is as much as the fact that you took the time to add a compelling and intentional story behind the food itself. So how do we create this story? There's a million ways of doing it and every artist is going to be different and you're going to have to learn your own techniques and your own setups to tell the right story. But I want to share with you a four-step blueprint that I use virtually every time. And these are four questions that I ask myself before and during every photo shoot. The first seems obvious, but it's important to understand what subject you're shooting. If you're taking pictures of soup, you're taking pictures of soup. If it's cookies, it's cookies. So when you understand that, you can answer the second question, which is, how do I share this information with other people? It might be obvious to you that you're taking pictures of peanut butter cookies, but how does your audience know that they're peanut butter cookies as opposed to another kind of cookie? Part of telling a good story is sharing information. That's really the basis. You need to share visual information that quickly and obviously describes what it is you're taking pictures of. But beyond information, you also want to share feelings. So you need to ask yourself, what do I feel as I look at this food, or as I eat this food, or as I'm approaching this subject? If you can be conscious and aware of your own feelings, then you can answer question four, which is the hardest part of how do I visually describe these feelings through the food to anyone who looks at the picture? So these are the four questions I ask myself, and I'd like to go through an example of these peanut butter and molasses cookies and answer all of these questions as I set up the scene. So the first question is, what are we taking pictures of? What is the subject? And it's obviously peanut butter and molasses cookies. That leads us to the second question, which is, how do we convey the information to the viewer that these are peanut butter cookies? First, we have the fact that they're cookies, which is obvious and easy to understand. But to convey the fact that they are peanut butter cookies, I added peanuts to the scene. And that gives a reader a visual cue of what's in the picture and helps us tell a story much more easily and much more dynamically. Third is the feelings. What feelings do I feel as I approach the subject? 
And as I was making these cookies and thinking about them, I felt warm and comfortable, uh, feelings of you know warm, fuzzy, safe feelings of drinking a glass of milk and having a cookie. So that's what I felt, and that's what I wanted to convey. And how did I do that? We're going to look in a minute at the tools. So I used a few tools, like the lighting. I made sure there was a front lighting, which gave them kind of a dramatic but soft glow. I made the cookies in a stack. So I styled them specifically so they looked inviting, like you could just grab one off of the top. I also added milk to the background, which kind of adds to the warm feeling of the, the perfect marriage of milk and cookies. So those are some of the elements I used. And let's look at the six primary tools you have for storytelling with food. I mean, there's a million different little things you can do, but they generally fall into six categories. So if you get these down, you'll have all the tools you need to tell an intentional story. And really the rest of the course is about understanding each of these tools, how to use them and how to manipulate them to tell a better story. So the first three are related to the scene, as in the physical world, the, the food itself, and the setup. The first one is the way you style your food. And that's by far the most versatile tool you have in telling a story. For example, I stacked the cookies, and that was a way of styling. If I had spread them out and scattered them and they were messy, that would tell a different story. So the way you style your food is very important, and there's an entire section of four videos devoted to styling within the story. Second is your lighting. A soft, diffused glow tells a much different story than direct sunlight with harsh shadows. So learning how to control your lighting is also very important. And third is the accents. Things like the milk in the background or the peanuts around the picture help to convey information or build emotion and tell a story. The other three elements are related to the camera and the technical aspect of how you want to set up the artwork. So the first one is the zoom level. Whether you have a tight shot or a wide shot tells different stories. If it was really tightly zoomed in, that's going to be more intriguing and dramatic than if you had, for example, a wide shot of an entire banquet table. Those are both valid uses, but they tell different stories. Another technical aspect is the camera angle. As in the, the picture of the molasses cookies, it was a very low angle. It was direct. You got to see all the cookies stacked from their own level. It would be a very different picture if I had taken an overhead shot. And if I took a crazy sideways shot, that would be a little more chaotic and dramatic, and that would tell a different story. If you'd like to tell that story, it's perfectly fine. It's just that you need to understand what the camera angle is and how it's going to affect your story. Finally, the depth of field. If you're new to photography, depth of field simply means how much of the picture is in focus versus how much is blurry. Shallow depth of field would mean that the tip of the cookie is in focus while everything behind it, including the back of the cookie, is blurred. Whereas a deep depth of field would mean that the whole scene or the whole banquet table is in focus all at once. And this is something you can control much more effectively with a DSLR camera. On a point-and-shoot camera, it's pretty much set for you. So that's one of the reasons why you would, might want a DSLR is to control the depth of field. It's a very valuable tool for food photographers. These are the main six categories of tools you have to tell a story. And like I said, much of the course is devoted to learning how to integrate these elements into your story. Let's now take a look at a few examples of my own photographs where I tried to tell an intentional story and I'll walk you through my process of how this worked. It's important to start out by talking about what the food is exactly. Remember that was question one on the blueprint is what is the subject? Because a lot of your job of storytelling revolves around making sure it's clear and obvious what exactly you're taking photographs of. So in this case, we have zucchini fritters in a tomato sauce. That's the subject. Um, to convey this information, you can see the zucchini fritters, you can see the bright, boiled tomato sauce, you can see the basil in the background. 
And the feeling I wanted to convey with this is a sense of realism and boldness and in your face, here's the food, let's sit down and let's eat right now. You know, roll up your sleeves, let's cook some food. So one thing I did that was kind of fun that I hadn't done before this picture is I went to my garage and I took this picture on a concrete surface. So I figurative, I physically took it on concrete, but it was also kind of a figurative sense that this is a concrete dish. And to drive that point home even further, I actually styled it in the pan. There's a whole lesson later on about choosing the right dish to present your food. And in this case, the dish is actually the pan that it was cooking in to further enhance that sense of realism. One of the other elements we talked about is controlling the zoom level of your shot. And for this one, I wanted to do a tight shot where you can see some of the detail in the zucchini to get a clearer picture of what the food is, to make it seem more real, and to enhance the drama of this picture. So those are some of the techniques I used in this photo. Let's look at a few others as well. Here we have miso soup. Again, it's important to start by describing what the food is. And one thing I did to convey that information was that I used a bamboo background and I put chopsticks in the picture. So that gave it an Asian feel that made it a little more obvious to the viewer that, okay, this is an Asian soup, a Japanese soup. It's probably a miso soup and not some other kind of vegetable soup, for example. One thing I wanted to do to enhance the realism of this picture is the cutting board in the background. That was put there intentionally with the green onions on top to signify that this is fresh, it's immediate, someone just chopped up the onions and put them on the plate, and it's right here in your face, real, right now. So I wanted to give it that kind of a feel. But there's another element of miso soup that I wanted to incorporate in this picture, which is that it's very comforting. It's a warm, inviting, comforting food. So part of that is with the lighting. You can see that there's lighting from the right side of the picture, scraping over to the left, so it gives it a bright, fresh kind of feel. But another thing that was really important for me in this picture is that there's two bowls. If there was just one bowl, it would seem a little lonely and dramatic by itself, and that would be okay, but I wanted to incorporate the feeling of warmth and comfort and shared food. So this is the kind of scene where you can imagine two people enjoying this meal together. It's not something lonely off by itself. It's something you share with a friend or a loved one. And I wanted to incorporate that with two bowls, whereas the feeling would have been very different if I had only used one. In another example, this is apple cider. Now, it's obvious that this is apple cider, not because there's amber liquid in a mug. I mean, that could be anything. But when we add the apples and the cinnamon, that makes it almost immediately obvious to anyone that we're looking at a picture of apple cider. And remember how the very first step is to understand your subject and make sure you're conveying accurate information about what's in the picture. That's the first step of storytelling. So without the apples and without the cinnamon stick, it would have been much more difficult and a little awkward to try to understand what's going on here. But with those things, it makes it immediately obvious to anyone who looks at the picture. I also wanted this to have a fall feel. I shot it in the fall. It's a fall drink, and I shared it with my readers in the fall. So I wanted to make sure that point was clear. And part of that is the fact that I used a dark wooden surface with a chalkboard behind it to give it an earthy concrete kind of feel that feels warm and inviting. And part of that warmth was also that I used a diffuser on the window. And a diffuser is just basically a white sheet. And what that does is it allows most of the light to come through, but it blocks the shadows. So it would have been a different picture, not necessarily worse, but it would have had a different feel if there had been bright shadows and reflections coming through from the left side where the light is. But for this purpose, to make it a little more warm and glowing, I used the diffuser. So notice how in these three examples, we looked at basically all six of the tools I talked about, from styling to lighting to accents and all the different camera techniques you can use. And those are the broad categories of techniques that you'll be using and that we'll be discussing in this course. Finally, here's one more. And for this one, I don't want to tell you what my story is. Because at the end of the day, as I mentioned, it's not so much about what, if you can understand my meaning in the story. It's the fact that there is a story. As long as you can answer the question of what is this story, whether your answer is completely different than mine or not, then I've achieved my job with this pasta puttanesca in the pan with the wine bottle and the cork. So come up with your own story for this. It doesn't really matter if it matches mine or not, 
as long as there is something there. If all of this information made your head spin a little bit, don't worry. Don't be overwhelmed and don't think that you have to remember everything we talked about. What this was was mostly an introduction with two primary takeaways. I first want you to understand that telling a story is really, really important. Really, that's your primary job as a food photographer is telling stories through just the visual elements. With photography, you don't have access to touch or taste. You only can access the one sense of sight. So you need to be able to tell a story just through the visual elements. And second, I want you to be comfortable with the concept that you have plenty of tools available to tell this story. And really, the rest of the course is about exploring those tools, from the styling aspect, to the lighting aspect, to the image adjustment aspects and post-production. The rest of the course is going to help you uncover and become comfortable with all the tools you have available to tell your story. So if you don't understand all of the aspects of lighting now, that's to be expected. We're going to learn that as we go along. For your homework, there's two things I'd like you to do. First, visit a website like Food Gawker, which is just a collection of really high-quality food photographs. They do a great job of curating the community and uploading content every day that really represents the best of food photography. So when you have this collection of pictures, I want you to scan through and look at maybe two or three or four that really speak to you for whatever reason. And for each of those, I actually want you to write out a complete story. Take 100 or 200 words to describe the scene as it feels to you. And again, it's not about matching whatever the photographer had in mind. It's about creating your own story. And this will help you get into the mindset of becoming a storyteller through your photography and understanding that there are very clear stories behind the best food photographs. Second, I'd like you to create your own story and your own photo shoot around this story. So remember, back to step one of the blueprint is you have to pick a subject. So make something you feel comfortable with, whether it's cookies or whatever you're making for dinner, and then imagine the story you want to tell. Gather your feelings around this subject, and then set up a scene that conveys the information and conveys those feelings using the six tools we talked about. Then snap a few pictures. Remember, we haven't gone over all the details yet, so they don't need to be great pictures. I just want you to get in the habit of learning to tell a story through every picture you take. So have some fun with this photo shoot, and I'll see you in the next section on learning how to style your food appropriately.